Hello and welcome back to 225 Loud and Live Tab G Tutorials and today I'm going to go over grenades. So grenades are a, quite a crucial part to effective killing if you're in a pinch. All of these can be used in some way to help you or help your teammates in order to get to victory. Now typically you want to rely on your guns but if you're at a point where the terrain, uh, the, the physical place that you're in can be taken advantage of with grenades then you're going to want to do that. And there are a couple ways that you can take advantage of where you are and your guns and your blessings even to use grenades effectively. All of these throwables will help you. So first I'm going to start off with a couple of the most effective that I like to use. That's going to be Cage Grenade, Fire, and Snowstorm. So all of these are pretty much these two that I have, the Snowstorm and the uh, Fire Grenade, are go-to damage dealers in terms of if you want to uh, stop someone from moving or deal heavy damage when they are already not moving. So a way that you can get them to not moving is using a cage grenade, as I picked up, and then this will trap them, and that gives you an opportunity to throw a fire nade, and that'll start quickly doing damage to them, and they can't move. They can't get out of it, so that'll do quite a bit of damage to them. Uh, that is just extremely effective, always a surefire way to get heavy damage on people. But if you don't have a cage grenade, another way to get them not moving is with a snowstorm nade. I can't show this very well in this training room, but I will pull up some clips of it. Uh, it is very, very nice to have a way to slow down people. Uh, this snowstorm, it does not very much damage, but it does stop them from moving quite a lot. And of course, as you saw, those hit markers show you where they are. So you can use that to, for instance, you see where they are with the snow nade, and then you shoot into the snow nade, even though if you can't see them, those hit markers will show you where you are. You shoot them and they die, because you're good. So all of those will affect someone's mobility or deal damage to them, and that's very, very nice. But another way to take good advantage of the cage grenade is with the orbital strike. The orbital strike, you have to be a bit careful with it because you can easily kill yourself with it. I will provide a bit of an example of how this can work. So another way, first we're going to start it off by trapping them with a cage grenade, and this way, theoretically, they wouldn't be able to move. Now we're going to throw an orbital and quickly run away because... The Orbital Strike Grenade is one of the coolest, but also deadliest to you grenades you can ever use, because if you don't run out of it immediately, then it'll pretty much just kill you from the center. So you have to run away from the center, and a Cage Grenade is a very good way to trap them and make them die like that. See, even though I was outside of it, it still hit me. So getting a Cage Grenade to stop someone from moving and throwing an Orbital is a guaranteed way to kill them. It's a good way to kill groups of large people, like if, you, if you're playing in squads, you can kill multiple squads. Like, a lot of people just with one orbital by stopping them from moving uh, in multiple ways. You can immobilize crews in multiple ways. Like, for instance, if you have a squad, then you can down their squad, make them go back to their friend, but then throw an orbital so they can't revive their friend. Either way, just find a way to inconvenience people with a orbital strike because it pretty much locks down an area similarly to how a, K a Killjoy's alt in Valorant does because it, once you see that orb, you're not going in there. So that's a good way to lock down an area, orbital strike grenade. Keep an eye out for them. There also is an orbital tase grenade. It's worse. It's cooler, but it's worse. Uh, it has the same blast range and time, but it's it's dead silent. It doesn't make any noise, and it tases people for a very long time. So once they're tased, you have to find where they are in order to go and kill them, and hopefully you don't get tased yourself. But that's just a fun little trick you can use. Now next, the other throwables that are fun to use and are quite crucial, there's two of them that come to mind, the healing grenade and the launch pad grenade. The launch pad grenade is a pretty much set in stone, at any point use it to escape from somewhere. If you really need to get out of a place, then just launch pad and you can go anywhere you need to go, pretty much. And you have to keep in mind that it does stay a bit for a bit, so you have to keep in mind that whoever is chasing you can be right behind you, but if you're like, if you're, you know, beside, beside the ring, if you're behind the ring, then it's a good way to get out of it. Just quickly get out of any situation by escaping with a launch pad grenade. Next is the healing grenade. This one's a good way to get up, downed uh, squad mates faster, to heal yourself. Um, this is just, it's a very defensive utility. But of course, it makes this huge thing that will heal you, but also other people can go inside it. So keep that in mind. And also, it's quite loud and other people can see it. So that's the only thing you have to keep in mind. Otherwise, very, very good for healing your team if they don't have any bandages, med kits, any other healing blessings themselves that that's good to use. Next, there are two other uh, grenades that I use for stunning people. Uh, besides the actual flashbang itself, the knockback grenade and the implosion grenade, these two 
I'll first start with a knockback grenade. I'll throw it at the dummies here. After a little bit, it'll explode, and it knocks them back, and it stuns them for a bit. As you can see, he's stunned. He's going to get back up. So that's something you can use to, if you knock back, uh, if you throw a knockback grenade like into a corner, then it'll stay in that corner. If someone's in there, then it'll knock them back. It'll stun them. Then you can go and shoot them kind of like you, you would for a taser by putting them down. Now, next, I'll, I'll kill these guys, and then I'll show the implosion grenade. So the implosion grenade is pretty similar in terms of effectiveness for knocking somebody down. When it explodes, it pulls people closer to the center of the grenade. So kind of if you're if you're in a tight building space and you're looking to pull people towards you, then you can use it to pretty much to pull them down and find where they are and just kill them quickly when they're stunned. So if I, for instance, just throw it in this building and step outside, as long as you don't get hit by it, it'll do some damage and pull them and stun them for a bit and then you can go in for the kill. So that is pretty convenient, but honestly, it's not one that I go for that much. Uh, there are other better grenades that I would use more often. An example of those better grenades are all of these offensive grenades up here, truly deadly. For instance, the fire grenade, as I showed you, is very, very good. But also the bouncy grenade, the splinter grenade, those are very, very good. So a way to uh, display this is by, first of all, if I throw this splinter grenade, I'll just throw it into the open and hide quickly, but it's still going to hit me. So see, this thing's going to explode. And that throws splinters everywhere. So that thing luckily didn't, it somehow didn't hit me. But that thing explodes and sends those splinters everywhere. Kind of like how the Mossberg 5000 goes. So this, this weapon, if you throw it in a tight space, then it's pretty much guaranteed to kill anything that's in there. Because those splinters do a lot of damage. The same, it's the very same effectiveness for the bouncy grenade. I'll throw it into this house and you'll see it'll just bounce around. Every surface it bounces off of makes an explosion. I can't, I can't even do like the heal thing because it's really big. So yeah, that's very, very deadly. Uh, it'll just do that. And you can easily kill yourself with both of these grenades, to keep, which is something to keep in mind. All of these grenades are very battle effective. You just use your terrain to your advantage. Because if, you, if someone's in a tight space, then a bouncy grenade or a splinter will do the trick. If someone's not moving very much, use a fire grenade or get them not moving with a snowstorm or a cage grenade. And then go in for the kill because it's a very good way to quickly immobilize your uh, opponents. Um, just get the advantage on them. Do something they don't expect and kill them pretty quickly. Now, of course, all of these other grenades here, um, I'm not actually really going to cover these explicitly because they're not that good. Uh, they're just kind of if you need them in a pinch, then you can use them. But they're not something that I would take over any other of these grenades that I've shown. All of the others I would take over all of these, for instance. But there's still some that you can experiment around with. As I should probably mention to you guys, just go ahead, go into the training room and mess with everything. Like get a good feel for all of the grenades, all the blessings, all the guns. It's just whatever you want to pick up. Just like give it a go. Anything that in intrigues you, because this game has a lot of weird stuff. Just go for it and start messing around with it and go in games and, and just do your stuff. Just kill people. So that's about it for grenades. Um, go ahead and throw some shit and win games. This has been 225 Loud and Live. Thank you for watching this Tabji tutorial.